Hello, and welcome to Age of Wonders 2, The Wizard's Throne. Uh, if you've uh, followed my channel and seen the Age of Wonders 3 or Age of Wonders Planetfall stuff that I've been playing, uh, this game is going to be very different from that. It's one of the strengths of the Age of Wonders franchise, that every numbered entry in the series is a distinct ent entity, and they're all well worth playing. Uh, anyway, we'll just uh, play this and uh, we'll talk over it a little bit. But you can also kind of see what the era is this game comes from. Uh, this is, I think, uh, what is it? Heroes of Might and Magic and Lords of the Realm both had, you know, this style of cutscene uh, in them. So this is very much the time period that we're looking at. Gone. Our last stronghold destroyed. We are hunted upon every climb, hated on the most remote isle. The gods abandon us. Queen Julia and her elves talk of aid, but do nothing. Humanity is doomed to extinction. Merlin! There! To the east! So a, uh, an airship that floats via via a balloon. Doesn't seem like it would do very well against dragons. You are safe here. Where am I? Come. The world is out of balance. The wizard's circle in Evermore is broken, and its wizards rage upon the earth with the same raw forces that created her. I, Gabriel, am all that remains to protect the wizard's throne. I dare not leave this place, and yet I do not know why my wizards have forsaken me. They must be stopped before all is destroyed. Master each sphere of magic. Only a human can restore balance to the circle and the world. Arise. Your initiation begins. For your people, all people, restore the Age of Wonders. Alright, so I will be doing a campaign playthrough. And uh, as we can see here, uh, we will be playing as Merlin, and we're just going to be doing the tutorial for today. Well, it looks like we will be going through every school of magic eventually. Uh, I have not played this before, that's the reason I'm doing this. I have played every campaign story at this point, except for Age of Wonders 2, and I guess the DLC to Age of Wonders 3. So this is just filling a gap in my own knowledge before Age of Wonders 4 comes out in about a month. Cosmos Tutorial. Uh, I have played a lot of Shadow Magic, Heed my words, so uh, I am familiar with how the game works. To the wizard's throne. I, Gabriel, shall guide you and give you the power to master each sphere of magic. But first you have much to learn, and there is little time. Learn to gather sources of magical power. Let this mana flow through you. Allow it to inspire your mind, and over time you shall learn new spells. Or if you choose, Focus these energies inward to learn skills of power. Hmm. The races of your world do not cooperate easily, but you will need them. You must be sensitive to each group and balance their needs and demands with your own. Do not be idle. Teach your people to be industrious. Build tools, fortifications, and structures of power. Instruct them to expand over the face of the land. Lift them up, and they will help you expand your own domain by building monuments that enhance your abilities. Even the greatest of all structures, the Wizard's Tower. The Wizard's Tower is, I think, the defining feature of Age of Wonders 2 and what really sets it apart from all of the other uh, Age of Wonders games. 
Although it is going back and forth, that's interesting. Uh, I will go with Classic, so I'm not playing at the same time as my opponent. And yes, Cosmos, so we are a generalist wizard. Uh, in this game, you don't really have specializations or secret techs or anything like that. You just choose your race and your magic and a few abilities, basically. Can we see what Channeler does here? No, I guess I can check in-game. All right, first the boring part, the interface. And yes, I will be reading all of this. Um, it's just good to know. Also, if I say anything that is factually incorrect about any of the gameplay elements of the game, it's probably because they changed a few things in Shadow Magic, which is a standalone expansion to Age of Wonders 2. And uh, I will, uh, since I'm, that's what I'm familiar with, I might just make certain assumptions that haven't been implemented yet, if that makes sense. All right, first the boring part, the interface. Take a look at the three windows across the bottom of your screen, starting with the far left, and I will be turning down the music as soon as I get an opportunity. Uh, events window, over here. Uh, the events window lists all important events that are occurring within your range of sight. If you click on one of the events listed in the window, it will center your main window on the place where the event occurred. Below the listing of events are three icons with some numbers next to them. Yes, gold and gold income, mana and mana income, and then casting points. You probably notice the big five icons to the right of here, I guess, where your magic options appear. These icons are magic options, object options, realm options, diplomatic options, and game options. Magic options is automatically up if you don't have anything selected, right? Which is showing my spell that I'm currently casting and the spell that I'm currently researching. Minimap. You have the minimap window, tiny representation of the entire scenario map. You can click any part, surface and uh, cavern level. Okay. In Age of Wonders 2, The Wizard's Throne, it's all about magic. That is true. This is the most magic-heavy game in the franchise, although the first Age of Wonders also had a lot of magic in it as well. Three and, um, obviously, Planetfall have far, far less powerful magical effects. Alright, so Spellbook... Uh, left section shows what I'm currently researching. Uh, this will make sense when I actually click click on things. First click the research button to open the research book. Okay. You can see your spells you can currently research. Don't worry about it for the tutorial. Yeah, okay. So I guess we'll stick with stone skin then. Now we can go skills and change something. Uh, okay, so it does... There's a little text down there that shows what all these do. This is where Channeler would show up, uh, the ability that we started with. Anyway, stone skin. Sound. Okay, that's better. Uh, I really love the music in this game as well. Alright. Main movement, important stuff. Okay, you can left-click on almost anything to bring up more information on the object. Uh, yeah, you can see a small portion of the map, rest is black or grayed out, move Berlin to the bridge. Okay, so if we left-click we can do that. I guess, yeah, arrow keys will give me the ability to scroll. So let's move to the bridge. Uh, after you finish moving, you just have to hit end turn. I guess that was exactly enough movement. And okay, I'm trying to figure out where I would see. There it is, Channeler. 10% less mana cost for spell casting and also casting points. Okay. So I can cast more spells. That's my hero perk. Heroes awaiting you at the end of the bridge, along with four elemental units. I don't have to actually move to the sign to read it, I just have to be able to see it. Welcome to Evermore, your initiation begins. Okay, we can see a little speech bubble there. And Elm, a good elf priest. And four elemental units will join me. Okay, unit stats. Attack is how... So it says slipping past the enemy defenses, this is their chance to hit. Damage is how much they hurt when they hit. So this is one of the big changes between Age of Wonders 2 and Age of Wonders 3, was that 
first two Age of Wonders games actually had hit chance, so you could miss with all your attacks. In the third game, they just made it so that defense drastically reduces the amount of damage that you take. Hmm. Uh, defense, easier is your, basically your dodge. Resistance is dodge for magical attacks and effects. Hit points are self-explanatory, move points also self-explanatory, and then various abilities. Okay. Uh, we'll move the water elemental out to the water node. City's most important map structures in the land, of course. As the town grows, it gains more options. This is true. There's a bunch of information here. We'll just take a look at that briefly. All right, so I have uh, level three wizard's tower. Okay, so starting with a maxed out wizard tower. Uh, this is like the tutorial mission. It's not going to be very hard or difficult. Uh, so here are my town stats. Uh, we are archons, which are cheerful. Uh, Thirty production, which in this game, I think it was Planetfall that uh, separated that. So in this game, an archer costs 30 gold. That is also going to require 30 production then. So Legionary, you can see, is two turns because it's 35 gold. I only get 30 production a turn. Uh, we've got gold income. We've got mana income, which is zero. Uh, research. And then uh, population growth. Yeah, growth in 26 turns. So we're going to go with the Builder's Hall. We'll do that classic. We can hurry it. Which is going to cost me 50 gold per turn that it hurries. Okay. And... Right, so we can click on this. Walk on the vault to learn the freeze water spell. Sure. Magic Vault contains arcane power that will instantly teach you a new spell. Undefended Magic Vault contains freeze water. Yeah. Okay, so also, you'll notice that they split off my main hero. So Merlin is staying behind, whereas my army went just automatically forward. Uh, there is a reason for that. So this is, again, the Wizard Tower, and I have enough movement to demonstrate this. So you can see this blue line here. That is my domain. I can cast spells anywhere within this area. But let's see what happens if Merlin steps outside of the tower. Well, that domain looks a lot shorter now, doesn't it? Yeah, so that's my wizard's natural domain. But when he's sitting in a wizard tower, his domain increases. Also, we click here. And this is something that is, uh, I guess, a little bit controversial. See, experience, 0 out of 0. Whereas if I look at Elm, 0 out of 30. So Elm is a hero. She can level up and get more powerful over time. Merlin is a wizard. He does not. So your leader, the leader of each faction in this game, just never levels up. They are the way that they are. You can, and I guess we can go into research. So now that we have our city, um, you can see we get our spells much faster because our city is producing research for us. You can research skills to increase your wizard's powers. Also, the difference between research and mana. Mana in this game can be applied to research or to mana, but research itself uh, has to be dedicated to research. So as you can see, I currently have 25 mana, which our town had zero, so I'm guessing it's 20 from my hero and five for, or 20 from my wizard and five from my hero is my guess for my mana income. Uh, false, I have a power node. Okay, so I'll get 10 from that. So maybe it's 10, 10, and then five from the hero. Um, so I have 25 mana and 15 research. I can convert all of my mana to research if I want to, which I guess I will do for now. Uh, my mana income's going to hurt, but they started me with 1,000, so it's not a big deal. Here you can cast your spells. Global spells can be cast on the map. Unit spells can be cast on the map and during combat, and are also enchantments that will persist between battles. That was something that was removed later, because it turned out that stacking enchantments on units was kind of overpowered. I don't know. I like it. But uh, in 3, all your unit spells became temporary combat spells, which are not as fun. And then you have your combat spells, which are just only cast in battle. So they're saying cast Magic Servant. Mm, I feel like Freeze Water is probably what I should be doing, though. Well, let's listen to the tutorial. Yeah, 
Yeah, so 34, uh, 54 gold, but we lost 48 mana. We can do this to go through here. Casting. Ah, uh, whoops. Cast. <laughs> Spell's ready now. Anywhere within my domain. So they're saying do it on the hero party. So yeah, I could cast it out here. Anywhere that I've explored, it is within my domain. Uh, anywhere that is uh, not water, I guess. Do I have any fog? Did fog of war not exist yet? Uh, okay, I can't summon it on mountains either. Hmm. Yeah, this tower is giving me a lot of vision. Well, summon that. And my advisor recommends Tower Guard. I don't think so. So there's a lot of stuff that we can build here. A lot of the blue stuff there is related to the fact that we already have the Wizard Tower prerequisites. Uh, let's do... Yeah, so Builder's Hall increased our production up to 30, which is still not great. Uh, Siege Workshop will increase production further, so we'll go with that. Spells, I'm going to cast Freeze Water. So that we can continue along here. Elemental go to the elemental conflux. And yeah, so you can see we can't get our hero across. We could go across with certain units. Uh, we have different movement types here. So our elf hero has forestry, she moves through the forest without a movement penalty. Water elemental can swim, obviously. Uh, Earth Elemental has uh, cave crawling, I think it's called, which allows it to move faster on the underground layer. And then, of course, the air elemental can fly. Anyway, we're done with you for the turn. Uh, you can just guard. We never want to move our wizard out of here. Uh, you lose if your wizard dies. So moving the wizard into our, along with our army, like he's not that strong anyway, and moving him with the army is going to be putting him at risk. And he doesn't level up from experience in battle, so there's really no reason to have him leave the wizard tower. Uh, the only thing is that, I guess, if he does die, as long as you control a wizard tower, he will respawn if, uh, from the void in a few turns. So to eliminate a player in this game, you must destroy, you must uh, take out their wizard and capture every single wizard tower that they own. Okay, stone skin has been researched. Uh, let's go with stoning. Sure. Next of it, uh, that's party, right? This is event. Freeze water. Um, freeze water ready, hit cast. Um, okay, so what was going on there? Okay, what was going on there was I had my party selected and it was having an interface issue. There we go. Uh, we don't actually want you to be done for the turn. Yeah, so you can transform the terrain. Uh, it's quite powerful. Uh, in this game. Okay, so you have the most movement. So let's move the wizard along and just see what it has to say about this. Magic is sub subdivided into six specific spheres and one general sphere. Each of these spheres represents a certain aspect of the universe, ranging from the powers of death and life to raw elemental fury. The energy of the spheres manifests itself through power nodes. These are the most important power source for wizards. Nodes typically generate 10 power, but a node of your specific sphere will generate 20 power. And Merlin is Cosmos, as we saw earlier, so he's the general, general class. Flag each of the nodes to gain information on your sphere. You can examine the source of power from the power tab of the magic options panel. Oh. Okay, so I was right. Merlin's 10, Elm is 5. And I have no spells active. False, I have a bunch of summons. Anyway. In contrast with the forces of air, the sphere of Earth deals with all things bound to the ground. The Earth's sphere possesses the power to manipulate rocks, metal, and the very tectonic plates of the planet. Grumpy Fenger and the Solitary Mab govern the Sphere of Earth. Alright, so we're going to be just running along here and getting a bunch of lore, I guess. Um, Air Elemental, you can not make it, but we'll move you along as well. Still curious if I have any... Okay, yeah, there is Fog of War. I guess one other thing to point out, uh, another difference big difference from between 2 and 3, Age of Wonders 2 and 3, is that these structures are flagged. Uh, so kind of like mines in Heroes of Might and Magic, if you've played those games. 
I flag it and it is mine. I don't have to have a city nearby. I don't need my city domain to be near the uh, near the structure. I just have to flag it. And if my opponent flags it, then they take control of it. All right, any more spells? We'll not bother. Um, oh, I can check what other spells I have, though. So my global spells, I started with Magic Servant. For unit enchantments, I have healing and stone skin. Actually, you know what? Let's cast that. And for combat, we have Cosmic Spray. Okay. Testar grows to town size. Okay, cool. Cast. Hmm, I feel like there's something going on with this in inventory. I hit cast, and then it doesn't actually do anything. First time. Alright. You can see we're getting one experience a turn. We now have Stone Skin, so this unit has plus three defense. Cool. Uh, tied to the Sphere of Fire are all things burning and chaotic. The powers of intense flames, molten lava, and chaos bow down to the masters of the Fire Sphere. The arrogant Yaka and seductive Carissa govern the Sphere of Fire. For all things holy and pure, wizards of the Life Sphere exist. Life magic typically pertains to the protection, restoration, and salvation of the living. The ancient Serena and wise Anon are the... Anon? Uh, are the wards of the Sphere of Life. The power to control the skies and winds falls within the Sphere of Air. Spells of the Air Sphere typically revolve around the manipulation of wind, lightning, and cold. The wizards Artica, the Ice Queen, and Tempest, Lord of the Skies, govern the Sphere of Air. Death, with its opposite life, form the revolving cycle of existence. The magic of death allows a wizard to control the forces of evil, darkness, and decay. Arachna, the Spider Queen, and the Twisted Necron govern the Sphere of Death. Sitting opposite to fires, the sphere of all things touched by moisture, water. Wizards of the water sphere can turn liquids into toxins, freeze the water in the skies, or even evaporate the moisture in all living things. The jolly merchant Marinus and the mysterious Nimue govern the sphere of water. What the six, uh, what the six specific spheres do not cover, the broad cosmosphere encompasses. While not as specifically directed as any of the other six spheres, the Cosmosphere can cast spells of each sphere, and many of its own useful spells of enchantment, alteration, and cancellation. Cosmos unites all of the spheres. Mastering it is the ultimate goal in your quest. I, Age Gabriel, govern the Sphere of Cosmos. With my wizards forsaking me, I have but little power left. Okay. And I guess there's a road here, so let's continue down that way. Well, next turn, I guess. And we can see another player's domain. This is Gabriel. He has a magic servant. All right. Do I want to cast another enchantment? Don't really have anything. Stoning. Can research a freet. Could. Plus two damage, plus two resistance, minus two defense, and willpower for Fury. Holy Champion. Plus two attack and plus two damage versus evil. Fire immunity and fire strike. There's a bunch of uh, interesting spells here. Now we'll take Fury. Get another enchantment. And yeah, now that we've grabbed all of these nodes, we can see our power 105. Like, this significantly increases our abilities here. Again, this is a. Uh, just research. This is a custom map. Or, sorry, a tutorial, so there's not a whole lot of challenge uh, being presented here. So let's go down this way. Party enters the domain of Gabriel. Your wizards can cast spells on the overland map and at any combat that takes place within his domain. A colored border encircling your wizard represents your domain. To expand your domain, you can move your wizard into a city that possesses a wizard tower. Wizard's towers are easily recognizable in cities by the huge spiraling tower protruding from the city center. As long as your wizard remains in the city, his domain will be greatly expanded. And this is, as I said before, this is something I really like. I actually don't like the fact that you get these overpowered heroes in these games. So the second game, the fact that your main wizard doesn't actually level up, is something that I actually really liked about these. 
Uh, you can build expansions to Wizard's Tower to further increase your domain. If you find that your domain is too withdrawn from the front line of combats, you may need to construct new Wizard's Towers and cities closer to your enemy. Another thing is that if you are in a Wizard Tower, you get the domain that extends from every Wizard Tower that you own. So that's nice. Here is also expand your Wizard's Domain. To be exact, they allow your Wizard to cast spells within a one hex radius of the hero on the Overland map. This includes both, both combat and Overland spells. For this purpose, heroes are invaluable for leading offensive strikes in enemy territory, especially into another Wizard's Domain. Now, Merlin, in order to proceed, you must challenge me personally. Walk towards the water mill. Before you can attack me, you must declare war on me. All right, and then a uh, description, uh, sorry, a basic um, description of how alignment works. I'm not going to read all of this. Um, there, You can negotiate, you can make offers with them. Uh, wizards of similar alignments are easier to deal with. This is something that was changed in, uh, I guess this part wasn't changed, but in uh, Age of Wonders 3, the races of this game no longer had predefined alignments. So you'd have your neutral orc hero that, or neutral orc leader that could then make choices and become either a good orc or an evil orc. But back in Age of Wonders 2, that was not the case. You are, if you're an orc, you are just evil. It's your nature. So in this case, I think we are playing Archon in this mission, which means that we are pure good, which is like good only with uh, diplomatic penalties against neutrals. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, so our alignment is good. His alignment is also good. We're going to declare war. Now, he's a scholar. He researches less, uh, more efficiently. Message sent. Okay. And I believe we don't actually declare war on him until... Uh, until the next turn, is that right? It is time you paid for your chaos. It shall bring to bear the full weight of the wizard's throne upon thee. Okay. Hmm. Like pestilence. Alright, we finished our siege workshop. More production. Also, we grew, so we got more production from that. So now... Let's get even more mana. Combat. Yes. Okay, use a smite. So one thing that uh, I didn't like about the Age of Wonders 2 combat was just how small the battlefield feels compared to the first game. As you can see, uh, even on the very first turn, the defender was able to move forward and attack me. Uh, this is where we started having the same... Uh, how do I say this? Uh, action point system, so you can see the green. Here I have a 15% chance to hit. If I move into yellow, I'm only going to get two hits. Oops, magic bolts. And I have a 0% chance to hit. I guess the, the hill's in the way. Alright, well, we'll go 1. Still 0% chance to hit. Here is a 20. I guess we'll do that. Yeah, I wasn't expecting much there. And the way that combat works, see we have a damage of 8 here. I think that means that we do 1 to 8 damage. You know, 1 to 10, 1 to 10. Uh, so stat-wise, you can see this uh, is significantly weaker. Our elementals are a little bit uh, overpowered, I would say. Now you have healing. Can you heal an elemental? Succeeds. Okay. 
And then, because we are in our range, we could cast a spell. Let's cast that stoning spell that we researched. Uh, was it three attacks? It might not be, actually. It might just be two, always. Well, let's find out. No, it is three. Okay. Uh, so I guess we used up some of his retaliations. Uh, oh, right. Experience isn't shared anymore, is it? Oh, good old RNG. Okay, he's not retaliating anymore because he's out of uh, action points. And I guess we can we could do another stoning. So we really want to get the kill with our hero if we can. We did not. Oh well. I uh, leveled up our Water Elemental by doing that. So uh, I'll be honest, uh, Age of Wonders 2 has my least favorite combat system in the entire franchise, uh, which is why I will be playing the campaign on normal difficulty as opposed to my usual hard, just because I don't really want to have large uh, numbers of enemy units, like them sending waves of, waves of units at me and I'm just kind of grinding away at it. I don't think that I would have a very good time doing that in this particular game. I'm mostly just playing through this campaign for the story, since it is the one campaign I haven't really experienced. Anyway, good work in defeating me. There's uh, This is no great tragedy, as wizards are immortal. When defeated, they get pulled into the void, but as long as they own a wizard's tower, they will respawn there the following turn. Press M turn, you'll see me respawn at the nearest wizard tower, uh, next unit, etc, etc. And I believe if we look under Diplomacy... Uh, oh, we're slow, we're with them. Okay. So we conquered the water mill, which gives us 20 income. I thought that the income on this was 10 and then multiplied by 2 if you're playing a water wizard. Hmm. I'll we'll have to see. Teleport to the next phase. Okay. Uh, before we go, you should create an alliance again so I can help you on the final task. Don't need to always be at war with everybody. Permanent alliances are not always possible depending on the scenario victory conditions, but you don't need to be at simultaneous war with everybody. He's offering me an alliance, we'll accept. Uh, enter. Next to the teleporter, you see a number of resources lying around. Each of them provides something different for your empire. You may want to split your party to pick them up in a fewer number of turns, right? That's kind of like what I did with the, uh, the mana node. Uh, to split up your parties, you must use the movement switches, blah, blah, blah. I know how to do that. Play around with them until you're comfortable with them, yeah. Oh, that's uh, doing this, and then right-clicking to toggle who you have selected. Uh, if you have everybody selected, right-clicking just selects the one. I guess if you have... Uh, you can't... Okay, you can't deselect everybody. But yeah, you can, you know, decide what you want to do. Alright. Wizard. No, wizard. Hero. Grab me this mine. Income 20. Structures like mines provide a fixed amount of income each turn. Some structures provide more to elemental. Okay, yeah, so I was right. Mine, windmill, watermill, and furnace are... So I guess it's actually 20 and 40. Okay. It's been a long time since I've played the second game, so I had these numbers wrong. Or maybe they were reduced to 10 in um, Shadow Magic. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so that's 20. Pick up the gold. Uh, you can also see we have a metal here. Uh, so we have slightly increased stats on our unit as a result. All right, production resources gives us a free building. Do you want a teleportation gate or a tower guard? Oh, teleportation gate is, I think, the most expensive structure in the game. So we'll grab that, even though it's not useful for us. Resource dump, pick them up to see what they do. I guess we'll just sit there. That's fine. Right, windmills are a little bit different because they get money based on how many fields they have around them. I believe it's 10 base and then 2 per field. So uh, if they're in an open space like this, they are technically the best 
income structure. Okay, mana did what I expected. Crat, uh, catalyst, we can get 150 research points or 50 casting points right away. Hmm. Now what happens if I take this with somebody who isn't a hero? Artifacts. Unlike regular units, wizards and heroes can use powerful magic items. Mm-hmm. If you're ever defeated, you drop all your items on the ground. You can view them. Teleport. You can teleport it back to the wizard or hero if you have enough mana. Okay. You can't wear two helmets. Right. So if I click on this teleport, it's going to cost mana. I could just pick it up with her, but whatever. And that gives her plus two attack and the magic strike skill, which I think she had already anyway. I guess we can check that. Uh, no, she did not. Okay. So more likely to hit and magic damage on her attacks. It's a bit ambiguous as to what that means. Uh, enchantments. Fury. All right, we've nerfed her defense, but increased her damage resist and given her willpower, which makes her immune to... Oh, I guess willpower doesn't show up on here. Immune to mind control, basically. Now we have our whole party selected, I'm going to grab this Hasteberry tree. Hasted our party for three turns. This restores all of our movement. Uh, oh, and haste. Yeah, three turns. Reduces the cost of each hex moved by 2 MP. Oh wow, these were way better back in this game. It's not just restoring your movement points, it's actually making you move faster as well. Let's see the... Uh... Okay, well, let's go this way. I could be buffing my elementals. I don't particularly feel the need to do so. Uh, let's get Blazing Comet, sure. Fire Halo. So I could select multiple units if I wanted to. Uh, I'm actually curious. What happens if I go above 20? Not enough casting points, okay. So our hero now has Fire Halo as well, Fire Immunity, and Fire Strike. Across the hill I created a town of undead. Why would you do such a thing? I thought you were a good person. You must attack this town and use your magic and skills to defeat the enemies within. First, let's capture the structure that is blocking the mountain pass, Magic Relay. Okay. And we learned the Turn Undead spell from this vault for free. Okay. Let's see, Fire Halo's done. Alright, we're already doing that. Finished our temple complex. This lets, lets us get shrines, which is cool. We'll, we'll get a monastery for more mana. The magic relay extends your domain, so as you can see, it's just another structure like that. And onward we go. Oh, because of the haste berries, it thought we didn't have the move, and then we did. Uh, that's a lot of undead, but it's not particularly scary. Zombies, some archers. Alright. Uh, sure, we'll learn to summon an angel. So I'm kind of curious. Poisonous cloud in the air. Actually, let's not be stupid. Undead. Immune to death damage, poison, fear, and seduction. Okay, yeah, so there's no point in trying to pestilence the uh, undead town. Well, let's just attack, and this is probably going to end the mission. Do you wish to command this battle? So I could say yes, I could say no. Um, yeah, we lost two units. Auto battle is not great. So unlike um, Planetfall, I don't get to see the results and then decide if I want to replay or not. So uh, I will never be auto battling in this game. I just wanted to do it the one time here, just for the sake of the demonstration. Uh, well done. Now raise the foul undead town. To raise a town, blah blah blah. Oh, our hero died. 
It's okay, it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, another reason not to, to auto battle. Okay, let's raise. Uh, the village of Chitorior lies in ruins. Oh no. Okay, let's uh, teleport to our wizard, I guess. Uh, because we raised the town, some more undead got angry at us. Uh, oh, we can... no? Why? Alright, he cast a spell to make the land nicer. This is what an angel looks like. My stats. Alright, and that is the tutorial mission. Well done, Merlin. You are ready to gather your people and make them great again. Remember the lessons you have learned here in Evermore. Treat all people in power with fairness. Be patient and you shall prevail. Find my renegade wizards. Face them. Calm their fury. Bring them back to me. When you are tested sufficiently in a sphere of magic, return to me and I will help you pass to the next sphere. Now go. The world awaits the hero you must become. All right, and I guess I'll just wait for the text to finish scrolling off in case there is a second bit of text, but it doesn't seem like there will be with that outro. And I guess we just sit here forever until I click. Okay. All right. So it looks like we get two missions per elemental sphere and then a final cosmos mission at the end. Fire. Initiation phase. So it uh, looks like we'll be fighting Yaka, and we will do that next time. I will see you then.